Welcome. This guided meditation will begin in about 10 minutes. The beginning has been timestamped in the video if you want to skip this introduction, if you're revisiting this audio. If it's your first time, I recommend listening to the introduction and simply use this 10 minutes to reflect, relax, and prepare yourself to go profoundly deep within your own being. This is a guided meditation based on a Gnostic psychological methodology to transmute and dissolve parts of ourselves that we would like to move past and integrate. In other words, to dissolve a part of our ego that no longer serves us and that we, after much self-reflection, see fit to remove from our life so that we can release the causes of suffering in a deeper way. This is not about hating or rejecting oneself, but it's primarily about self-psychological comprehension, because it is self-comprehension or self-knowledge which leads to self-realization. Remember that the word psychology derives from the word psyche, which means soul. Therefore, if we free up our psyche from the clutter and muck of unconsciousness, then we liberate more energy for ourselves to perceive more elevated and subtle realms of consciousness. In other words, we are simply shining the light of consciousness into the darkness of our unconsciousness. This is a really powerful type of ego meditation, but what's important is to choose something about yourself that will really help you to thrive into a higher level of being. Okay, so we want to choose some kind of aspect, some element, some ego of ourself that's within us that we want to meditate on in this practice. If you have the time, I recommend pausing this video and listening to a lecture called Laws of Being on the Glorian YouTube channel. It should help greatly in your understanding of this process and this type of practice. The link to the video is in the description below, along with other resources. So I recommend that in these next moments before we begin, that you reflect on a part of yourself that you no longer want to experience in your life anymore. And please remember, we are not trying to force something out of our consciousness. We are not trying to suppress anything or run away from our problems. Quite the opposite. We want to embrace them and see them for what they really are. We are simply intending to obtain information and self-knowledge about an element of ourself, an aspect of ourself that we know does not serve ourself or others. It is through self-knowledge that true transformation takes place, through the grace of allowing our real being to emerge when the ego or egos have stopped making so much internal noise. This happens when we learn to truly detach our awareness and be able to observe our inner world without judgments, reactions, negative emotions, or other types of conditioned ways of being. We do this in order to be able to see the truth of our problems objectively, without conditioned consciousness. This means to see the facts of ourselves instead of the opinions of ourselves, which also come from our ego. So that's what we're working to do here. But please do not expect that this meditation will get you to some divine elevated state. We don't want to use meditation merely for the intention of, quote unquote, feeling high or blissful. For that would be wishing to be in a state 
that is not reflective of what we actually experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is a very grounded and realistic type of meditation to actually see the facts of who we are here and now and to understand our psychological conditioning. And this is simply how we do it, by practicing meditation on ego. So this is the real psychological work of focusing and concentrating the tool of the mind on our problems in our life, in order to extract useful and insightful information from it, to experience some kind of revelation to do with why we are actually experiencing such and such a problem or ego. This, of course, requires a tremendous amount of honesty, courage, and humility in order to choose something about ourselves that we would like to shed light on and ultimately release. So this is about being interested and curious about why we actually behave or feel in certain ways. It's a lot easier to choose something when we have taken up some kind of serious spiritual practice in our day-to-day -day lives, because if we attempt to remain conscious during the day, we will easily run into habits, behaviors, moods, thoughts that overwhelm us, control us, and in short, make us suffer. If you're struggling to choose something, perhaps it's to do with some kind of addiction, or maybe we have a bout of anger every time we see or hear things from a particular person or something else. Perhaps some kind of laziness stops us from doing something we've been wanting to do for a while, or maybe we're just struggling to get rid of a certain habit. Maybe lust is making us suffer a lot, maybe envy and jealousy is making us feel certain ways and causing issues in certain relationships. Or perhaps we find ourselves in just random negative moods and we don't know why we get into such negative and unconscious states. And of course, such states relate directly to other unwanted negative manifestations in our daily life. So choose something that you're ready to move forward with into non-attachment. If you have a lot of aspects to work on, if you feel like you already know and have a lot of ego, uh, the guidance is that we should ideally just choose one thing or maybe two things as it's best to be specific about uh, what we really want to get rid of or what we want to overcome. So just try to choose one thing, one ego, one thing that keeps recurring and manifesting in your life and stick with that throughout the practice. Ultimately, if we want to let go of something within us, then we have to comprehend it at a specific level and not just intellectually. We shouldn't come out of meditation thinking thoughts like, I now understand this ego and I have transformed we do have to comprehend it at our different levels of being, emotionally, instinctively, and just the many dimensions of our self uh, that we will discover throughout this meditation. So, you know, perhaps you do come out of this meditation saying something like, I now understand this part of myself and I feel like I have moved on. Perhaps it is true through this meditation, you will comprehend a part of your ego in a very profound way. However, ego has many faces and one element of ego is more often than not connected to many other parts of our psyche. Therefore, don't expect that this meditation will be a quick fix or miracle technique. The deeper magic here is that ideally what you choose to work on will be something you will continue to work on after this meditation, something you will continue to contemplate and reflect on in your daily life in combination with also self-observation.
So ideally, once you practice this meditation, you'll be able to practice it by yourself, at your own pace. Guided meditations are good in the beginning, but eventually you need to learn to drive the vehicle of your own being yourself, so that you can experience your own inner space at your own pace, with your own intuition and your own inner senses. If you're not familiar with self-observation, my video on the key of soul in the description is a good place to start. And so eventually, one day, through this devotional practice as a commitment to yourself, you'll start to slowly and gradually see transformation start to take place in yourself. And you'll start to see that the manifestations of what caused the suffering within you in the past will actually begin to cease. This process of actually noticing our chosen thing actually start to dissolve may take weeks, months, or in some cases, if the inner obstacle is very dense, it could also take years. What's important is to enjoy this process of unfolding the many layers of our being and growing in self-understanding day by day. And if you can combine this with transmutation and alchemy practice, then it will be infinitely more powerful. There are links down below if you're new to that. So with all of that said, let's begin this practice where I'll guide you on reflecting on your chosen problem or ego, and then talk you through comprehending it, releasing it, and trusting the higher power within yourself to begin the process of psychological death within yourself. This death, which of course, leads to the rebirth of a higher level of being. When you're ready, begin by being in a comfortable position, with your eyes closed, comfortable in your body. And simply, for five seconds, take a deep breath in. Two, three, four, five. And hold your breath. Two, three, four, five. And exhale. Two, three, four, five. Inhale again. Two, three, four, five. Hold it. Two, three, four, five, and exhale. Two, three, four, five. Continue this breathing cycle at your own pace for a couple of minutes. If you can extend holding your breath for longer, that's great. If not, five seconds is just fine. And now, taking some more natural deep breaths, allowing the body to breathe in a steady rhythm, in a balanced way, get in touch now with your energy, your emotional state, and your psychological state. Accepting whatever is here and now, in this moment, totally relaxing the mind and the body. Letting stillness and patience be the foundation for this practice.
as we relax and move deeper into our inner being, begin to see the sun of our solar system. The colossus energy of fire in the center of our solar system. Feel its immense power to give life and warmth and light. The sun produces infinite amounts of nuclear energy than humanity could ever produce. Feel this power, this cosmic energy. Sense it. Now see a ray of golden yellow light begin to slowly extend from the sun's core and begin to travel through space and towards the earth. Powered by love and intention, we see this solar ray become more intense and more powerful yearning to reach the earth and endow it and us with illumination. See this ray now arriving to our planet, penetrating the atmosphere, entering the earth's blue sky, and now see it traveling to your country where you are now. Seeing this ray of powerful solar energy above our home and now entering into our room, filling it with light and concentrated solar energy. Now see this ray of light become even more concentrated and see it begin to enter at the soles of your feet. You may feel a sensation in your feet. That's okay. The ray of the sun is imbuing your feet with cosmic forces of love, balance, equilibrium, and health. And as it travels into your feet, feel any tension be totally obliterated through this light of the sun. See and feel this light now traveling up your ankles, caressing your shins, your calves, your knees, your thighs, your groin, pelvic area, base of the spine. Feeling the lower half of your body completely relaxed in this beautiful, glowing, powerful, warm light.
Now let this light penetrate your organs, your intestines, your stomach, your liver, your kidneys, your spine. Let the light fill your body with energy and vitality. This light now enters your lungs, filling the space of your lungs, and then slowly begins to enter the organ of your heart. Feeling that with every heartbeat, our entire being becomes profoundly and deeply serene. And as the sun connects to your heart, let your whole body become just a little warmer, a little more cozier as the sun warms your heart, which warms your blood and warms your entire body. From your heart, the light extends to your arms, elbow, wrist, palm of your hands, thumbs, fingertips. And again, from your heart, the light extends upwards now to your neck, your head, dissolving all tensions, all energies and nervousness, anxieties, dissolving any tension in the jaw, the mouth, the tongue, letting it all relax completely. Relaxing all the small muscles in your face, behind your eyes, the back of your head, your ears, your inner ear, and finally, the crown of your head. Letting this light totally illuminate the great organ of your brain, your pituitary gland, and your pineal gland, And just as we've connected to the core of the sun, we also let the core of our brain be filled with light and strength and vigor. No tension can stand in the nuclear cosmic power of this light. Our body totally relaxes as if we're bathing on a beach on a hot summer's day, totally concentrating our entire body with healing universal energy. Seeing ourselves now 
as a body of light, connecting with our inner divinity, our sacred self, that which we intuitively feel has infinite potential deep within us. Feeling absolutely in alignment with your own connection to your own inner divinity. Happy and blissful that we are connecting to the source of where we came from, our home in the depths of our consciousness. Rest for a moment in this light. Enjoying your sense of being here and now in inner stillness, inner silence and inner peace. If thoughts, desires, or just noise comes through, that's okay. We simply acknowledge and come back to our being. As if the noise is the same as the physical noises we can hear outside of us. We just come back to our being in this moment concentrating on the practice, on the task at hand. Preparing ourselves now to begin to work psychologically, to illuminate some part of our being that is still in some kind of confusion and conflict, a recurring problem or behavior that manifests in our day-to-day -day life, a part of our ego that we feel we should now understand and gain self-knowledge on. Choose something to work on. This ego, this problem, would have recurred many times through your life, causing disturbance, unconsciousness, and suffering. This particular negative habit or behavior would have happened many times in your life, but just choose one recent memory where it occurred, where it manifested in your life, or if you have a very vivid memory from perhaps a very traumatic experience that happened long ago, you can use that as well. As long as you have good memory of the experience, because we're going to recall it, we're going to relive it. If you're self-observant enough in these moments, just recalling this memory now may already bring about some kind of movement, some energetic, emotional movement within yourself. Some kind of energy. You feel this now because you gain clarity through this meditation. We need that space of being, that space of clarity in order to see ourselves in a more purer light of consciousness. So 
now you may be able to intuitively feel some kind of movement, some kind of perhaps intellectual or emotional noise within yourself as you start to just reflect on this memory that you've chosen. And that's absolutely fine. It is fine because it exists. It is there within yourself. It has happened. But since it is causing this conflicting and conditioning energy, it means it hasn't been completely comprehended or understood yet. And you're probably going through life with your own challenges and tests in ways that try to help you understand this thing that you haven't fully integrated. And that's fine. But this type of meditation accelerates this process of integration so that we can move on with our next learning stages in our life. And we know when we are at our next stages in our life, when these problems, these egos, no longer begin to appear anymore. We no longer have the same reactions anymore. This is the sign of true spiritual evolution. True psychological revolution. So that's what we're doing here now. Consciously choosing to give our undivided, unconditioned attention to the ego that we have chosen. You may notice this makes meditation a little more intense because we may have to make a little bit more effort, a little bit more intensity in order to not get lost in mental narratives or particular emotions about this particular problem or ego that we have chosen. So don't be drawn into feeling negative about this particular problem. It's fine. It's part of your experience. Exercise a little bit of self-restraint in not identifying with this particular memory. Simply observe with your complete, untainted awareness. Nothing more, nothing less. Blank mind. Universal mind. The observing consciousness. Stay with this. Now, perhaps your mind is already playing many scenes from this memory. But in this practice, we want to slow down and we want to proceed step by step. So, gently and slowly, bring the beginning of this memory to the blank canvas of your mind. For example, let's say someone is meditating on every time they come home from work, they have an ego of anger that manifests. So in this instance, the beginning of this memory would perhaps be driving home from work. So now begin to see yourself at the beginning of this memory. Recall, see, hear, 
touch, feel what you were doing before this psychological aspect of yourself began to go into activity. See it. Experience it. What were you doing before this ego manifested? How were you feeling? Don't jump ahead. Stay with the memory of the experience. What were you thinking in those moments? What were your desires? What were your emotions? What had you done during that day? Actually be there, vividly, back in the memory. Have complete trust in your memory and your imagination to play this out. And observe yourself in a detached manner, totally not identified with what is happening, as if you are watching a very interesting and immersive movie about a person. This person is the main character of this movie, which is you. When I ask a question, try not to answer immediately, but stay in observation and inner silence, just experiencing the memory. Insights and self-comprehension will come spontaneously through the grace of allowing and sitting with the many discomforts and emotions of this particular experience. We never understand ourselves because we react to our experiences. What is the tone of this movie? What is the atmosphere? How does it feel in each scene, in each moment? What kind of music can be sensed in this scene? How does it feel? No answer is required. Only awareness, only observation. The light of awareness sees the truth. with no distinctions or opinions or judgments. Observe it all. Watch it all play out. This is a crucial part because this is where this internal aspect of this ego begins to possess us and take over us in this memory, in these scenes before this particular problem that you have chosen 
manifests. Don't try too hard. Don't struggle to visualize or imagine. Don't be desperate for answers. This is meditation. Simply observe. Simply recall. Allowing your being to see it all. Taking some deep breaths if there's intense emotions. Or dense blockages. Be as detached as possible but also interested, identified with your inner divinity, with your consciousness, not your ego, not your human existence. Whatever is happening in these scenes, good, or bad, just let it be, because that's what is. Now, see yourself just a few moments before this negative, unconscious energy starts to play out in this memory just before you felt the initial reactions or impulse to do something unconsciously. What are your thoughts, your desires, your reactions? What are the reasons behind those thoughts reactions, or desires. Many thoughts may begin to present themselves to the canvas of the mind. Don't get lost in any one thought, but simply remain in constant meditation so that you can penetrate more profoundly into deeper insights. When we attach ourselves to any one thought, we limit ourselves to perceiving deeper insights. Stay with the flow of the practice. Now see this ego actually acting out in the memory of this scene. What does it feel like? How dense, how intense does it feel? Why does it feel this way? What or who has possessed us. What is triggering this behavior? What are the causes of the emotions that are happening in this scene?
Perhaps you perceive that this psychological entity is also connected to other psychological parts of yourself, other egos, which is almost always the case. So what is it connected to? Feelings of lack of self-worth, animalistic desires, self-pity, greed, restlessness, pride, Envy, lust, you're getting in touch with this psychological I, this me, this sense of self which is not reflective of who you truly are in your innermost real being. It's not the highest reflection of your own expression of your soul. Why is this? What has been suppressed? What has not been healed? You may let the mind analyze Perhaps extra images or words or sounds may come to the surface of the mind. That is all fine. The subconscious mind may be trying to help you. Or perhaps it is more nonsense from the mind. Only you can observe and discern what is useful, intuitively. Play out the scene. Perhaps there are details you have missed, parts you don't want to face. Things that you said with regret, or things that you did that caused guilt. Why did it cause these negative moods and feelings? Be curious, like watching an interesting movie. Why does the main character do these things? Think psychologically. Giving this type of attention to this element, to this area of your psyche 
brings about the light of pure consciousness to it. It refines it. It transforms it. There's nothing here for you to do. You only need to be in your being. Allowing, watching it all play out from this higher perspective. So that you can comprehend it. If there are no answers or understanding coming through, that's okay. At least you allowed yourself a certain level of acceptance. And as a good teacher once said, what you accept, you go beyond. Asking a few last questions now. These questions are simply to encourage self-inquiry and self-reflection. They do not need an intellectual, specific, defined answer. Trust the intuition of your being. This ego that you have chose, what are the motivations of this part of your psyche? Does its motivations serve your higher purpose? Do they serve your awakening? Your development? Does it serve the awakening and the happiness of others? And with a feeling of deep honesty in our hearts, we can feel the answer to, do we want this in our life? The answer to that question may be deeper perhaps a little more complicated for you specifically, or perhaps it is as simple as saying no, choosing no, I do not want this in my life anymore. And now that we have comprehended this part of ourself, And now that we have also judged that we would like to overcome this part of ourself, the last stage is called elimination. Or in other words, psychological death, transmutation, or transformation. So this meditation has been a three-step process. Comprehension judgment, and elimination. Think of it as a criminal in court 
on trial. The criminal is this one ego of yours that you've chosen. And everyone in court is a part of your own witnessing being. So we first have to comprehend through thorough investigation and analysis. And once we have comprehended it, then our internal judge, our inner Lord of Karma will decide what must be done. And in most cases, if we have analyzed and comprehended parts of ourselves that we no longer need, that no longer serve our higher divinity, then we can easily and clearly decide what parts must go. So as within, so without. We have trials and courts externally, and they are simply reflections of our inner process of transformation. And so for the last part of elimination, we want to connect even deeper to a very powerful part of our being. Just as a judge says, by the power vested in me, I declare such and such a sentence. So in the same way, we are going to connect to the power within ourselves that is capable of sentencing certain purifications of the mind. This is the greater part of our being, the part of our self that is infinite, eternal, and totally capable of self-transformation and spiritual rebirth. Only the most divine inner senses can begin to dissolve these elements that we have comprehended. Perhaps one way we can describe this deeper intelligence is what is known and has been described as by many traditions, many religions, as divine love. In the Gnostic tradition, we call upon, we invoke, we pray, we urge the energy of the Divine Mother to help us. The sacred feminine, the universal mother energy that is within us all and within all things. She is Isis, Virgin Mary, Kali, Parvati, Durga, Devi Kundalini, Shakti, the mother of gods, the goddess of creation that allowed all things to be created and can also destroy too. We request this energy of the Divine Mother to dissolve this ego and remove it from our being. We need this higher force. It is not a concept or an idea. It is an electricity within our being. And we need this force, this energy, especially if it's something we're really struggling with. Some things can be dissolved through self-reflection and consistent practice, but other things which are very dense, we need some help, more energy. For those who don't fully understand this kundalini power yet, 
may simply get in alignment with the idea of your higher self, or simply just God. For the Divine Mother is an aspect of God anyway. Whatever it is that you use, what's important is direct faith that this powerful aspect of your own consciousness, of your own being, will take over for you to transmute this inner part of yourself. So what's important is direct faith and complete trust. The ego, intellectual mind will always doubt this. Surrender this. You are pure awareness, not ego. Your true nature cannot be defined in words. Your true nature is in the inner, sacred power of your inner divinity. Perhaps some visual inspiration comes to the canvas of your mind, an image, a symbol, a face of the goddess, or simply, perhaps it is just a feeling of your inner divinity agreeing to blossom with you and help you in your heart. Remember that this earth, this world, this collective place that we all agree upon is just one minuscule world in a sea of worlds out there, infinite dimensions. And the energy of this aspect of God, which is the Divine Mother, is incredibly powerful and transformative. The ego mind doubts it because our world does not teach it. And just as a mother in waking life does anything for her children, our spiritual internal mother does exactly the same. Kundalini rises according to the merits of the heart. According to the love that we have in our heart for our own divinity within. Connect with this. Give your offering of sacrifice. The sacrifice of yourself and allow it to be disintegrated into the cosmic forces of love. Let it die in the flower of life. I'll allow a few moments for you to do this now. You may pray mentally or vocally, or allow any words that come to heart be spoken and affirmed to your inner world. Or you may simply intuit this process happening in your inner silence. Afterwards, we will end with a mantra.
We will end this practice with the mantra Cream 13 times. 13 being the number of death. K R I M. In the Gnostic tradition, this mantra can be used to eliminate any type of ego. This mantra can be pronounced mentally or verbally. If you aren't comfortable with it, you can simply listen. The meditation will stop after it has been pronounced 13 times. You can continue to chant it afterwards by yourself if you like. Or just meditate in inner silence for longer. Or begin to choose to end the meditation. And do that by very slowly reorientating yourself, reintegrating yourself back to where you are in your physical environment. Slowly moving your fingers, taking deep breaths, and eventually slowly opening your eyes back to your waking world, your waking experience. You may see this ego aspect of yourself dissolving in the elemental fires and flames of transformation and renewal. Fire renews our nature. Feel your body as a flame that incinerates the ego, incinerates your karma. Cr-
Grrrr.